I was doing that and then of course you know I do my usual make sure I check some DJ live streams um that uh station called um H-O-R-E H-O-R H-O-E-R Berlin right um I'm still trying to sort out to get a little guest set on there when things open up hopefully that will happen very soon but that's one of my favorites um they obviously do that in a little converted I'm gonna say it's a is it a toilet or is it a shower room whatever it is it's a pretty cool little setup so I check out that from time to time if there's a good boiler room I'll check that as well um they have a good um what they the, the other platform is United We Stream they do pretty good ones but some of the my favorites to look through again are the legacy channels like you know Luca D and this channel called Fra909 um, unfortunately the dude that um, started this channel unfortunately passed away I'm going to say sometime last year it might have been um, pre-COVID I'm pretty sure he had leukemia or something if I'm not mistaken so he unfortunately passed away but his legacy continues and he was one of the first brave channels that I used to watch when I first got into like electronic music or dance music specifically um, this was some, sort of my introduction um you know and I, I quite liked it i liked the fact that i went in and i got exposed to the ricardo louis lobos's the luciano's marco carolas the jeff mills the carl craigs and then from there i kind of worked my way down into the underground i think if i would have maybe come or come in it the other way around i might have probably got i don't know would i got put off i don't know i doubt it because i'm I, i'm quite a curious person but i, I like the fact that i came in and i saw it from the commercial kind of big festival stage side of things and then once i kind of got more understanding and gained a little bit more knowledge i got to see okay cool this is separation between i could tell who's good and bad i could differentiate between who's good and bad and i couldn't tell um because it's my choice sorry because it's my opinion sorry or my taste levels and then of course from there you get to you know go and dig deep in um finding out labels sub labels agencies da, 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 da. and then you maybe you know google some people that are adjacent to them or on the same lineup blah blah, blah. and if it's if the place that you're looking at is programmed the right way you might find some other artists that way you might get some track ideas of set set playing and that gets you into another you know um tunnel that you're going down so again it was just a great starting point um and i just saw this video again i'll quickly play this this is from uh fire 909's channel this is a video of Luciano and Ricardo Villalobos back to back at Love Family Park. Um, another of course and a seminal uh German I'm assuming say is it Berlin? I'm not sure sure if it is, but another sort of seminal outdoor open air festival in the same vein as like a love parade and all those kind of places. And these videos were basically my life for the beginning stages of me kind of coming into the music, kind of seeing all this sort of stuff. I mean like wow, this sort of stuff exists. And again, it's odd because nowadays whenever I hear because I remember I went to this little um, power hour uh, thing where we sort of sat down and spoke about the culture and all this sort of stuff and what what's great what we look what we're enthusiastic about what we're not enthusiastic about and when the topic of festivals came up a lot of people kind of you know scoffed at it like, Ugh. and I didn't really understand why especially when it comes to the UK like we have some of the best in the world right here on our shores. Um, from all different types of genres so it was really odd to hear a whole group of people who love electronic music basically say no nah, they don't really care too much for festivals but then their reasoning behind it was why i kind of liked it right the idea that you could basically see a whole host of different people all in one day for a relatively cheap price they didn't like the fact that it was a little bit happy that it was a bit um too sparse um there was too many randoms um you didn't really get the club feeling which because of course you don't because it's an open air thing and generally um it's just not the best place i guess for those type of people who are fans of places that would maybe provide them with a let's say quote-unquote safer space festivals don't really invite that kind of crowd right they're a little bit more leery so i definitely got that regard but in terms of just an overall experience i always enjoyed them i thought the idea of like moving around freely um you know being out in the fresh air the you know going from sort of like you know bright sunny day to um sunset and of course into the evenings still pounding and playing music it just felt i don't know it just kind of resonated with me somewhat and these videos were definitely part of um that love affair for the open air festivals <laughs> Oh, 
Carter the Rockstar. And then it got me thinking, I wonder when stuff opens up, whether or not these channels will kind of have a little resurgence. Because I remember there was a period, there was like a weird window, right? There was a window just before it got annoying to have cameras and people pointing shit in your face when you were playing all the time. But then it, it was also, yeah, there was a time at the beginning. If you go on Luca's video, Luca909, sorry, Luca, Fry909's channel on YouTube, and you go to the most earlier uh, uploaded stuff, especially some of the stuff with like Richie Horton and Carl Craig, you'll see their faces like get a little bit freaked out by this guy just standing in a booth recording them or being at the front of the stage and pointing the camera in their faces. But as it kind of goes on, you see the dude attend another festival in the same year with the same person. They kind of obviously gain a bit of rapport. They kind of feel a bit more comfortable. But then by the by the subsequent years, you see a complete difference in how the DJs kind of act behind the booth. They're a little bit more expressive. They're kind of playing up to the camera a little bit. Because what I would assume is that back then, they definitely saw an increase in the amount of tickets they'll probably be able to sell from having evidence or video footage of these places they're playing in, right? It kind of gave people, it was sort of like a, a FOMO thing. It gave people like a point of reference, like, wow, look how fun that looks, right? So people would immediately go out and buy tickets again. So then in subsequent years, you start to see more cameras, more hangers on behind the decks, blah, 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 blah. But then it got a little bit crazy so they decided to rein it back in again then you see like a an official photographer for the club only going hanging around and then it kind of got to a stage now it felt like especially in tw i would say from like 2017 to 2019 it felt as if like people were kind of over having cameras stuck in their face too much it was like a bit like you know it was a bit of a, a social faux pas you weren't necessarily meant to do it you were kind of meant to do it in a kind of away from the decks so or away from the dj and didn't really kind of you don't want to get their attention with it but I wonder now the fact that we've been without this sort of gathering in any sort of big way, whether there's going to be a reintroduction of this sort of stuff where people so maybe feel it necessary to go and document it and whether or not the actual people playing will be really grateful that somebody is doing it because it will mark a time in history. And then of course over time you'll probably get a bit corny and people will be over again. But I think it might we might see a bit of a resurgence of these sort of like um rave footage channel things especially with instagram right because a few accounts on instagram that exist that basically collate all the best clips from around the world and i'm sure when stuff opens up you start seeing loads of you know first party videos and pictures of people crying and hugging and embracing on the dance floor but um you know it'll be interesting to see how it evolves going forward for sure because i'm definitely sure this played a huge part in these guys careers of course ra dj list as well did a lot of it for them but i'm sure people seeing these sort of club events festival events you know season in season out from the comfort of their homes i'm thinking raw i want to go there definitely added to their overall boost and probably did more than making a track would at that time i would assume nowadays it might be different but at that time you know your conventional way to become a superstar dj was just to make a great track and have that be you know passed around from dj to dj but now I'd imagine if you are responsible for a really viral clip of you playing behind a deck, that could probably do just as well as you producing a really smash hit. So let's just play a bit more of this and then we can continue. <laughs> what I would give to be in a crowd like that again. Look at him. What I would give for that, man. What I would give for that. 